we got a night time. I guess night time. It's six o'clock. Welcome back to CBB Talk. We got a late night. Sorry, I was going to say we have a late night episode. And I don't know why they got sidetracked. Weird start to the episode. But we're here for Friday weekend preview. And let's talk about some games on Wednesday because guess what? It's college basketball. It's anarchy. What do you expect except more top five teams losing? A lot of top 25 movement already. And we've had four of the top five teams lose already this week. Um, it's crazy. And we still got the weekend ahead of us. So, yeah, college basketball, it's what do you expect. It's what expect the unexpected is what it said. And um, it keeps bringing the drama. So let's go take a look. Already got big change. And I got a new number one. We can lead off the show with that. I got a new number one in my poll. I got the UConn Huskies right now. Number one in the nation. With a nice road win against Xavier earlier. I think that was on Wednesday. They got a nice road win. Um, they're, I moved them up four spots to number one. I moved Kansas down to number six after that loss. We can talk about that. Um, Kentucky, I consider Kentucky. I got them at two just because they do have a bad loss. Well, UConn at Seton Hall is not a bad loss. And then Purdue, three. Um, but, man, UConn's number one. So far this year at one, I've had Arizona, I've had Purdue, and I've had UConn in Kansas. That's four number ones. We'll see if I'll, how many I will get in total this year. I think that's going to be the same as the AP poll as it comes out, but I'm higher on Kentucky than most. I think they can get to that point. Houston, I don't know if they're that good. I got Houston four still after that loss this week because at Iowa State, you know, it's the best loss out of all those teams in the top five took. Um, and maybe if Duke or Auburn can get hot, I could see him making a run. Wisconsin's playing really well. They could maybe make a run in it. But let's get into some of the notable results uh, from Wednesday first. And Kansas took their first uh, Big 12, yeah, the first Big 12 loss of the year at UCF. Um, UCF gets their first Pac 12 win in program history. I'm sorry, Big 12 win in program history. Um, at least conference win, and it was at the Jayhawks. It was at home against the Jayhawks in a huge upset. No one saw this coming. UCF with maybe the biggest win in program history, or one of the biggest wins in program history. Kansas takes a bad loss there. Um, look, the it, the bench might be a problem. Uh, Furphy is probably should go in the starting line because Marco Jackson's been terrible. Didn't take a shot in this game, um, which is insane. He played 22 minutes and didn't get a sh- take a shot. What what are you doing? Um, they got to figure out their four man team at this point. Uh, but Dewan Harris struggled. Hunter Dickinson wasn't dominant, and UCF looked they're not they're not going to be a tournament team this year. Let's be real. And this is more concerning to Kansas for me. Um, Bill Self still is a very good team, and they came in this year preseason number one, my preseason number two team in the nation because. They had the top end talent, and I think losing Arterio Morris in the preseason was huge. And um, right now, Kansas is is a four man team. They need they they're struggling with depth, and which a lot of college teams do. But this out of the top ten teams in the nation, they're the team that probably struggles the most with depth. And Kansas is going to have to figure things out. And then they go and play a tough game at home this weekend against Oklahoma, who also took loss. We're going to talk about you know coming up. That's going to be a big test. You don't want to lose two games in a row there and get a little skid streak going. Kansas, I dropped them number six in the nation. They don't have good computer numbers. They're 20th in, or they're 19th in the net, or Ken Palm. They're one of them. I think they're 20th in Ken Palm. They're low in the net, so their computer numbers are amazing because they play a lot of close games against inferior opponents. So Kansas right now, I still think this is a very elite team that can win a national championship. Um... But this is just a weird, weird moment there. Up not eight going into half, and only scored twenty three in the second half to lose. That's a very unbill self like team performance. But I still am not worried about Kansas. I think they can still win the big tw- uh, Pac twelve. Gosh, I did say Big Twelve. I do still think they can win. Clemson dropped their third game in a row to move outside my top twenty five. The ACC is looking rough, man. I got two teams ranked in the ACC now. This going in this week. Five teams. Now, two teams. Um, That's unexpected. Virginia Tech is a tough place to go in and play, and they scored 53 points in that first half there. Sean Badula, master class of 32 and 7 assists. 32.7 assists there. Look, Virginia Tech was a team that could have been a tournament team coming in the year. They're probably not going to. But, again, 
we see the common theme is in college basketball, it's hard to win games on the road. And if you can do that, um, big props to you. Clemson's can't. They've now lost three games to Miami on the road, home against UNC, and on the road against Vatech. They got to get one back this weekend. Um, Another team that lost in the ACC, which is why the US, U, ACC has two ranked teams, it's uh, Miami. Uh, Miami lost a home game. One, you don't want to lose home games. And two, it's the Louisville. They just lost a home game to Louisville. Shout out to Kenny Payne and his team for getting the job done. Uh, Mike James had 26 in this one. Good game. Matthew Cleveland, 22. But you have four-point lead in half. Give up four to three points in the second half. This Miami team, again, I understand. Maybe we were a little, um, you know, they come off a Final Four run. Maybe we thought too much of them. They lost their two best players from last year's team, Isaiah Wong and Jordan Miller. Um, but you, you didn't expect this. There's 11 and four right now. They take in what? That's their first a- or second ACC loss, I believe. My, I, my, I, or maybe it's their first ACC loss. I can't remember. But you can't lose the home to Louisville. That's a big loss. That's a that's a terrible loss to take. Um, that's that you could get look back at the end of the season. That's the difference of you not making a tournament. Um, it's not not a good look. I think Jim Laranega can turn this team around, but um. Nigel Pack's going to have to step up. Norchad O'Meara is going to have to be a dominant force. Right now, Miami is struggling so far uh, this year compared to preseason expectations. Another top five team that lost on Wednesday was Tennessee. And man, I thought I was going to look like a fool because I went on this uh, this episode on Wednesday and said, I think Tennessee can win this game or will win this game because they have an offense. And in the first half, they dropped 22 points. And I'm just like... This is not the game that Tennessee's going to be, have a terrible offense. They come back and score 50 points in the second half, but it wasn't enough. Um, shout out to Starkville. Um, Hale State. Mississippi State gets a big win. Uh, this is a, this is going to win. You're going to look back, and maybe that's the, this is the win that jolts you into a tournament. Mississippi State is definitely a viable team. They're coming off a loss at South Carolina, which wasn't great, but they get their get a great win. Um, against a good Tennessee team. I still think Tennessee's very good. Don Konechny, the guy Ziegler, combined for 44 points. The rest of the team combines for 26 or 28. That's a concern right there. Santiago Vescovi. It's a very weird thing with Santiago Vescovi. This guy was probably the best player on the team last year. He's been a star pretty much player for Tennessee. He's taken a real back step this year. I do not know what's happened to Santiago Vescovi. I mean, Don Konech is a real good player. Um, but yeah, they didn't have much bench pr- production. Four points on the bench, and Hubbard twenty five on the bench is a big difference. Tolu Smith back, Tolu Smith back. This Mississippi State team is a completely different team. Um, they did lose to South Carolina with him playing. Mississippi State is definitely a tournament level team. We saw him do that last year. I think Chris Jans came back to that level again. I only dropped Tennessee, the number eight in the nation. Um, it is their first loss of the year, but their first loss in a while. And I still think this is a very elite team that can win the SEC. Uh, Drake, um, this is not a big heads on last year, but good win, Drake over Indiana State. Um, to keep uh, hopes up for a multi-bid MVC, it's going to be tough, but Drake gets a nice win there to keep in the race of the MV- MVC between them and Indiana State. Memphis, look, Memphis just keeps climbing up my pole just because they win. Their last couple games have been really close against inferior opponents. This one goes into overtime in a game where it was 100 a 7 to 101 victory for Memphis over UTSA there. I'm just concerned about this team now without Caleb Mills, a little bit of a lack depth there. Um but look, win for Memphis. Well, I I got Memphis and they're staying at ninth in the rankings there, but that's a very good ranking for Memphis. Um but I I, I feel they could slip because they're playing. They're not playing great um since they've lost Caleb Mills. The team I've been high on UNC is just going on and has gone on and won three straight road games, which is just it, it's really impressive. What can I say? They win 67-54 over NC State. NC State had one of the worst shooting performances I think I've ever witnessed in a game. They were what two for twenty from three? What what were NC? What was NC State? Two for twenty one from three. Um, they did shoot the free throw pretty well, 20, 16 for 21, but it was some of the worst three-point shooting I've seen. Casey Morsell had 12, DJ Burns had 11, but no one really stepped up. Um, and RJ Davis 
had 16, wasn't efficient 16, but 16 and 11. Elliot Cadeau stepped up at 11 in this one. Uh, UNC is a deeper team, and I say winning one road game against any team is tough in college basketball. Winning three in a row in a power conference like the ACC against two of them are against quality opponents in in um NC State and Clemson. Good win. The pack would have liked that to maybe be a tournament boosting win there. North Carolina holds strong. My your North Carolina Tar Heels fifth in the nation right now. And right now, my ACC favorite over Duke. They're undefeated in conference plays so far. So far, so a great start for the Tar Heels. Yep, UConn got to win. Cam Spencer, 19. When Cam, when Cam Spencer plays good, they win. Um, and Klingon should be coming back soon. Uh, UConn looking like maybe the best, team, the best team in the nation? I got them number one. Uh, the defending champs are where they belong. Sorry, my nose always gets itchy when I do these episodes. I don't know why. Wisconsin's legit. Uh, I'm taking that away from their win against Ohio State. Again, Ohio State is a team I believe has been ranked this year. They take a tough home loss. You can't, you kids can't lose home games here. And and this is a game where it was an average per shooting performance from Wisconsin. So you try to capitalize on that. Clee Smith had 18. AJ Store has just been the difference on this team from Korea the last year. Wisconsin missed the tournament last year. This year. They're really good, undefeated in Big Ten play. Moves to 12-3. and three. I got Wisconsin 15th in the nation. I think they could be higher. Um, a team that was a little low on the start of the year, they've proved me wrong. They've got good. They're undefeated. They're at top of the Big Ten right now. They're playing really, really good basketball. Um, a team that's not playing really good basketball, Marquette, loses a home game to Butler. The snaps their 19-game streak, winning streak at home in Big East play. Just a weird loss here, and brutal news is Sean Jones, who came back from an injury recently. He was playing really good. They're six men off the bench, out for the year, um, with, a, I believe, a knee injury. Butler is a decent team that can make an NCAA tournament here. But Marquette, I'm so disappointed in Marquette. I, I was so high. I think I had Marquette um, fifth in the nation, fifth, sixth in the nation preseason. I still have Marquette ranked, but they're on a little losing streak here. Um, I they've lost now two in a row, not playing good. I got them at twenty two from Marquette. They Cam Cam Jones has a good game, but Tyler Kulik's been bad recently. A guy that was easily preseason Big East Player of the Year, the reigning Big East Player of the Year, scores four points, one for thirteen from the field. So he's got to figure out if uh, Marquette wants to get back to that elite level. One team that's playing good, but switch back to that is Georgia, ten in a row win streak. 10-point win against my disappointing Razorbacks. Uh, but our, Georgia looks really good. Tough game this weekend against Alabama. Watch out for the Bulldogs if they win this game. Really put their name on the map here. UGA, 12-3 and in a 10-game win streak. One of the longest in the nation um, going. Ole Miss, big win against Florida. Score 103 points there. Jordan Brakefield, 28 in this one. What an outstanding performance to them. Ole Miss has a, t- a tough task this weekend. Um, let's see if they can. 15-1, Ole Miss could be looking towards a tournament in first year, under the first year of Chris Be- the Chris Beard era. Oklahoma loses to TCU. I think TCU's underrated. Look, they hadn't played many tough opponents this year, and this was their first really great win. This one was against Oklahoma. But we saw TCU push Kansas to the brink. Probably should have won that game. Uh, on Saturday, then they come in and get a huge win against Oklahoma at home. There, Elijah Miller was amazing. Twenty-seven this in this one. This team's experience. It's deep. I like this TCU team. Was fading them earlier in the year because of their ass schedule, but they've won games. They look good. Um, and Oklahoma, not too worried. Again, road losses are fine to quality opponents. Um, and th- this is what it was. Uh, Oklahoma came off a good win over the weekend against Iowa State. But now you have to go in and play a road game against Kansas. I mean, the Big 12, you're just going to get tough opponents pretty much every night unless it's West Virginia and Oklahoma State because apparently UCF could be a tough opponent on the road. Um, So that's going to be a tough one for Oklahoma. I don't want to lose two in a row. I moved. TCU is just out, and Oklahoma is down to 16th in the nation. But I still think Oklahoma is a very good team there. But they've been hanging their hat on the defensive end. 80 points given up in this one from TCU. And TCU um, could be a tournament team. 
Isaiah Collier out for the for maybe the year. Um, hate to see, but USC's ass. Um, and Colorado loses their third straight, and now they're healthy. Really hurting the pac tills chances of being a three bid league. They're gonna be fighting for two. Um, I'm gonna predict two, but I think a third team could heat up and maybe get an AQ or I, I say three was probably the favorite right now, but it could be leaning towards two right now with Colorado sucking. Last night, nothing amazing. FAU hangs on against Tulane because Tulane commits a dumb foul at the end of the game. Um, Nick Boyd, 21, this one. I still have FAU ranked. Look, I believe in this FAU team. I, I've said it again last episode. I'll keep saying it. If they lose one more game, they're out. They're on a short leash right now. Uh, but they continue to win. Or they continue to not lose two in a row. I mean, they go win, loss, win, loss, win, loss. If they lose this weekend, I'll be done on FAU. Um, sorry, going through Thursday's games. Um, yeah, Illinois is still really good. They get a nice home win against Michigan State. Michigan State's in serious trouble now at nine and seven, one and four in the Big Ten. Not a good start. Uh, it wasn't a good start, and now we're about in the middle of the season, and it's really not a good uh, way to you know first half of the season's been going for Tom Izzo's squad. They're going to have to start getting wins in the Big Ten. They're one and four, looking bad. Tyson Walker had 17, but it wasn't a great game. A.J. Hogard was not good in this one. Ty Rogers, 15. Quincy Garrier had good mo- moments. Illinois is, is staying the sh- ship, and if Terrence Chan can somehow come back for this team, Illinois is going to be a national con- title contender. I got Illinois seventh in the nation. I think Marcus Domask, real number one option, um, and he didn't have a great game this one. Illinois still got the win. That shows the depth of this team. And if somehow T. Shan can come back, watch out for Illinois to be able to win the Big Ten and win the national championship. UCLA got um, embarrassed. They lost by 46 to Utah. Um, they're terrible. Utah's terrible. I'm sorry, UCLA is terrible, not Utah. Utah's good. Utah could be that second team in. Them or Oregon. I would say maybe Colorado can make a run. I'm going to say two of those teams get in. It's going to be a three-big league um, because Arizona will be in. Yeah, UCLA is really bad. Six and ten, four-game losing streak going for the Bruins. Uh, Nick Cronin facing adversity. Adversity, this is probably just a wash of a year for UCLA. And the final great game over over the week was Santa Clara taking down the Zags. What a game. And Zaga is really never loses. Well, West Coast Conference games are not the St. Mary's. They lost one last year, I believe, to... Oh, who did they lose to last year? Was it... It wasn't Santa Clara. It was someone else. I can't remember. They did lose one last year. But this year, they lost on the road. Steve Nash in the building at Santa Clara. One of his first games back in that building. The greatest player in Santa Clara history. Um, And they get a win on the last second and one. For Santa Clara, big win there. Santa Clara is undefeated in the WCC. The WCC is open this year. Gonzaga will probably not have that large resume. They're going to have to win the eight, get the AQ spot. So shout out to Santa Clara, undefeated in in WCC along with St. Mary's. Gonzaga takes their first loss. Um, I think one of those three teams will win this league, but Gonzaga, they're going to have to win the league tournament, it looks like, to get in. Maybe if they win out, they can get in um as all net qualif or as a at large. But right now it's looking tough. The Zags will not be ranked for the first time since 2016, um, which is just insane. They shouldn't have been ranked, but it will be official on Monday that the Zags will not be ranked for the first time since 2016. Uh tonight, there's really nothing great. Boise State and Nevada is the only real impact game for teams that could be an NCAA tournament team. I have Nevada ranked 20th. Boise State coming off a big win against Colorado State. A 2-0 weekend here for the for the, for the Broncos would really bolster their tournament chances and the Mountain West's chances of getting five or six teams in the NCAA tournament. I'm going to take a quick break, and then we can get to the weekend. All right, let's get to this another weekend of conver- – I just hit my elbow there pretty hard. I'm good, I'm good. Let's get to another weekend of conference play games. I'm just going to go from 12 to the night. Um, I know there's some pretty good games, some solid games. Um, but So let's talk about them, give them my thoughts, and maybe some predictions. Syracuse, I, th- I still believe in Syracuse. They're going at UNC here. UNC back at home for the first time since uh, the beginning of last week. So 
Carolina coming off three road games. I expect them getting done here. Uh, 13 and a half it was a big number. I think Syracuse can keep it within that. Um, Northwestern's at Wisconsin. That's not an amazing game, but we see Northwestern be a tournament level team. Uh, they've they've now won two in a row. They beat Michigan State. They've beat Purdue this year. Wisconsin does on a big heater. I expect Wisconsin to win this one and move to five and zero in Big Ten play. That's a really good start for the the Badgers, and they would continue to be in first place. Seton Hall Butler is interesting. These teams will both be on the bubble this year, uh, but you gotta hold strong if you're Butler at home. No, my monitor turned off. Hopefully, my monitor turns on because if not, I'm gonna have to. We're back on. Both two two bubble teams. I said, and Butler's got home. Hold home court here, uh, especially when you're going against a team that's similar caliber. But Seton Hall's got off to an amazing start in the Big East. That should be a really good one in in Hinkle. Give me Butler at home to win that one. Tennessee's at Georgia. T- Georgia, again, 10-game winning streak. The Volunteers coming off a loss. Seven half-point favorites on the road. I think that's too much for the Bulldogs. Bulldogs, really hot. Uh, Will Wade. Not Will Wade. Not Will Wade. What's it t- No, what's his name? It's the Ford of... Former Florida coach. Now I have to search up who the Georgia coach is. Oh, my gosh. I His name was on the tip of my tongue. Georgia basketball coach. This is terrible podcasting. Mike White. Yeah! Told you it was a former Florida coach. I couldn't remember his goddamn name. All right, well, Georgia's on the heater. I think they can keep it within seven, but I think Tennessee should get this one on the road and bounce back. If Georgia wins... I think you might expect them in the poll. Uh, my poll, maybe. We have a top 10 matchup. I don't think our Oklahoma's a top 10 matchup, but it's a top 10 matchup according to the AP poll. And this game's, of course, on goddamn ESPN+. Plus. Like, what are we doing? What are we doing? Do you want this game to be, you want college basketball to be, you know, promoted big and people pay attention? You have the best probably matchup of the weekend on ESPN+. Plus. There was two ranked and ranked matchups this week, and both of them were on ESPN+. Plus. Oklahoma's traveling to Kansas. Again, I already talked about this game a little bit. Oklahoma, both teams coming off a loss. Oklahoma on the road. That's It's, it's not easy to go into Allen Fieldhouse, but Kansas has played a lot of close games there this year. Kansas is going to come back and win this game. I'm fairly confident in that. Bill Self teams usually don't lose two in a row and usually don't lose in Allen Fieldhouse. So give me the Jayhawks here to get the win. I think Oklahoma can keep it close. But Kansas Moore is a more experienced team. I expect someone else to step up this game. They haven't. Maybe it's um, Mer- or Furphy. Maybe somehow it's on Marco Jackson. But I think Kansas will win this game at home. San Diego State's on the road against New Mexico. This one's CBS Plus, a great Mountain West matchup. New Mexico needs to win this game to really help the tournament chances early this year in conference play because, again, the Mountain West is going to be a gauntlet. San Diego State, I think they're the best team in the Mountain West. They so far showed it. They have the, they, they have the pedigree. They have the experience. They have the talent. But going into the pit is not easy. One of the hardest places to play. One of the best stadiums in college basketball, and especially in the Mountain West. But I believe in the Aztecs. Maybe I'm a fool. Minus two New Mexico, but I believe in the Aztecs to get it done. Why I keep doubting Kentucky is the question I'm asking myself right now. Because they're underdogs at AM who's struggling. Give me the Wildcats straight up. I, I can't believe Kentucky's underdogs against Texas AM. I can't believe they're underdogs. They were underdogs last week and got the win at Florida. Kentucky's one of the hottest teams in the nation. Haven't lost since that UNCW game. Give me Kentucky to win, and Kentucky wins. Uh, they're going to be at number. They're going to be in two in my poll, and I'm assuming they'll be a top four team uh, on the Monday poll when the Monday poll comes out. Uh, this is a pretty influential ACC game. Virginia's at Wake. These going to be two bubble teams, I believe. Wake's five-point favorites. Win at home, Wake. Win at home. Virginia uh, has been bad on the road this year. I don't expect them to win this game. Providence needs a, get, needs to a win this game against Xavier. Sp- Providence is spiraling since Bright B-Hop has got hurt. Purdue will bounce back against Penn State at home. Clemson needs to bounce back against BC at home. So we got South Carolina going on the road. That's going to be an interesting matchup. The Gamecocks coming off a loss earlier this week to Alabama. They got blown out. Missouri's not great, but on the road's not easy to win. Missouri's favored in this one. I think Missouri will actually win this. South Carolina, I just think they're a little fraudulent. 
can they win well on the on the road? App State's at JMU. That's going to be a very good game. Two of the best teams in the Sun Belt. JMU came off a dominant win against South, Southern Alabama, I believe, last night. So quick turnaround for the Dukes. App State's a real test there. We saw what happened in football. Hopefully it won't happen in basketball. Florida is at Arkansas is at Florida. Arkansas somehow win this game and keep tournament hopes alive. If not, you're an IT bound. Kansas State's at Texas Tech. That's a very interesting matchup against two teams who've won a lot of games so far to start the year. I think Texas Tech's a very good team. I have not ranked. I like what um, Grant McCaslin's done this first year, but Jerome Tang's proven to be a great coach. And Kansas State may be legit. They lost Naquan Tomlin this year. They've bounced back. Road wins the Big 12 are hard to come by, though, so give me Texas Tech in that one. Seven, though, is going to be a tough number. If you're betting, I would stay away from that. Arizona on the road against Washington State. They shouldn't lose this game, but watch out. Do get your lick back against Georgia Tech at home. I expect they will. They're playing way better. Wow, I think this actually might be the best game. Houston's at TCU. That's just a really good matchup. Houston coming off a loss. Don't lose two in a row. Don't lose two in a row, Houston. TCU, a real good team, man. Um, if they can win this one, they'll be in the poll. They'll be in my poll. They'll be in the AP poll. This will be a huge win for TCU. They'll be two top 10 wins in one week. Houston, though, not an easy opponent. Kelvin Sampson does not usually lose two games in a row. And TCU has proven to be a team that can win big games at home. This should be a tight one here. I think TCU pulls off the upset and beats Houston. I really do. If if they do that, we'll see where they land in my poll. And Houston may be a little worried because the Big 12 might be too tall of a task for them. I wouldn't, I wouldn't worry too much, but I would be a little concerned if Houston loses this game. They're five point and a half point favorites on the road. That's just too much in my opinion. It, I think it's too much. Miami needs to try to bounce back at VTech. If VTech can win this game and start building more wins, they just had a bad start to the year. They had a real bad start to the year. I just don't know how many bids the ACC is going to get, three or four. And then look at this. St. Mary's at Santa Clara. Is Santa Clara, this would be the greatest week in Santa Clara's history, maybe, if they could win this game. They would be the they would be the, the West Coast Conference favorites, undefeated in the conference. St. Mary's win this game. You're the West Coast Conference favorite. The winner of this game, I'll say it again, is the West Coast Conference favorite. So that's actually an interesting one there. Alabama at Mississippi State. Let's see how legit Bama is. I think they're legit. I think they're playing really good basketball right now. They're starting to turn those losses into wins. Mississippi State coming off a big win against Tennessee. Win this game. You could be in my poll. And yeah, that's about it for Saturday. Let's see you Sunday. And of course, we have NFL playoff games, which is going to be fun. So it looks like some fun weather. Kansas City is going to be cold as shit. And it looks like it's snowing in Buffalo. So it should be fun to watch those games. I believe both the, both those on Saturday. I think they're both on Saturday. Rutgers at Michigan State Sunday. UConn plays on Sunday against shitty Georgetown. Illinois plays a Maryland team that's playing better. But there shouldn't be any crazy news from Sunday. And Memphis at Wichita State. I'm guessing one. Do you think Il- UConn, Illinois, Memphis? I think one of them will lose. Uh, my prediction is when I come back on Sunday, one of those teams will lose. All right. It's going to be a long weekend. So Monday, Monday, I'll release the episode on Monday probably earlier because I know I'm school MLK day. So enjoy the long weekend, everybody. And um, enjoy college basketball, as always. Peace.